Hello, welcome to our video solution to problem 8 from our Super Quiz 2. Uh, in this problem, we're going to be proving one part of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, sort of a necessary step, uh, so we're, we're not using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Uh, so here we're going to assume that some number has two different prime factorizations, well, possibly different, right? Maybe they're the same, but we have two prime factorizations for this number n. Uh, these p's and q's are distinct primes, right? That is, the p's are distinct from each other and the q's are distinct from each other. And uh, one of the uh, goals is, of course, to show that you have not just the existence of prime factorizations, but the uniqueness of prime factorizations. And so in order to show that, one of the necessary steps is to show that if you have a prime, so in this case we're looking at P1, occurring as a prime factor in one prime factorization, then that prime also must be a factor in any other factorization. So maybe P1, well, we don't know which of these QIs that it should equal, but it should be one of the QIs. All right, so how do we go about doing this? Well, it, it really is just going to come down to Euclid's lemma. So we talked about that in a previous video. Um, so let's see here. Why don't we quickly write down Euclid's lemma again? So Euclid's lemma says that if P is a prime and P divides a product, uh, I think we used B times C before, then P divides B or P divides C. Now, uh, here we have a prime which we know divides N, for example, right? So P1 is one of the prime factors of N. So we have, oops, we have P1 divides N. Okay, but N is equal to this other prime factorization. So Q1, B1, times dot, 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 times qs bs. All right. Well, we could, if we wanted, expand this, right? It could just be a whole bunch of, you know, q1, q1, dot, 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 q1, and there would be b1 of those. And then you'd have q2, q2, and you'd have b2 copies of those, and you keep going, and eventually you'd have qs times qs, and you'd have bs copies of those. So I now have p1 as a divisor of this long, long product. And through essentially repeated use of Euclid's lemma, we would say, okay, well, let's put some parentheses in our mind here. We know that P1 divides a product, and so it must divide one of the factors. And so we have P1 divides Q1, or P1 divides the remaining product, right? So the remaining product would be, okay, Q1 through Q1, and now there's just B1 minus one copies, and then you have all the rest of this stuff, Q2, Q2, B2, QS through QS, BS. Okay. And you just repeat this process. And at each step, you're going to peel off one of these Q1s until there's no more. And at some point, you'll start saying P1 divides Q2 or P1 divides Q2. Like there's going to be a ton of or statements here, right? And they're all going to say something along the lines of P1 divides a QI. All right, so continuing in this way, we're going to get a whole bunch of statements, many of which are going to be repeats, right? So like the first one was P1 divides Q1. The next time we do this, P1 will divide Q1 again. Well, that's not an interesting statement because we already knew that, all right? So there's going to be a whole bunch of OR statements. They're all going to look like P1 divides a QI. So we're going to have P1 divides Q1, or P1 divides Q2, or dot, 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 or P1 divides Q sub S. And one of these statements by Euclid's lemma has to be true. Therefore, P1 divides Q sub I for some I. OK, is that what we wanted to prove? Oh, no, we didn't want just divisibility. We wanted equality. Well, how are we going to get equality? Well, OK, these are prime numbers. So since QI is a prime, it has only two positive divisors. Let 
1 and q sub i. Well, p1 is a prime, so it's not equal to 1. Since p1 does not equal 1, as p1 is prime, p1 being a divisor must be qi. We have p1 equals qi. Okay, that's what we wanted to prove. This is the, the first major step in Gauss's proof of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. The second step, of course, is, well, once you know, whoops, there we go, once you know that all the primes on the left are primes on the right, of course, through symmetric reasoning, every prime on the right must be a prime on the left. So you know the same primes occur, then you just need to show that these exponents are the same. All right, but that's not asked for in this problem.